cattle. Instead, she perfected the art of surviving on her own. Without the help of a pride, this lioness had to adapt. When she hunts, the combination of patience, power, and speed is spectacular. This female is about six years old when she steps into the viewfinder of Herbert Brower, a wildlife cameraman. She'd been rarely seen, and if then only at a distance. But suddenly there she was, right in front of our eyes. Herbert is captivated by her and returns to the floodplains of Luwa year after year. It comprises 3,600 square kilometers and borders Angola in the west. The bank of the Zambezi floodplain marks the eastern boundary of the park. People living here tell Herbert that the lioness has been alone for many years. They call her Lady Luwa. When she rolls for him, a bond develops between them that will have far-reaching consequences. There was one thing, though, that she could not overcome, and that was her isolation. It took me three years of filming here on the planes, though, to understand how lonely she really was. At night, she follows Herbert into his camp. He would never expose himself to wild lions on foot, but he instinctively knows that she means him no harm. It is true that female lions can survive on their own, but they only thrive as members in a pride. Is it possible to find Lady a mate? And could they produce cubs and form a new pride? These are the burning questions facing Herbert and experts at African parks. Craig Reed, a manager at African parks, and veterinarian Dr. Ian Parsons face a dilemma. Reintroducing a full pride of lions into Lua could cause havoc. If one cow is killed or one person attacked, the local population would be up in arms. If they find her a mate, she will hopefully teach him and their cubs to stay away from cattle and people. The project is even more viable if she can transfer her impressive hunting skills. It takes four years of detailed planning to get the project off the ground. Lady is now collared to keep track of her movement. The average age of a lion in the wild is 16. She has about six years to produce a litter. To find a mate for Lady, the team goes to neighboring Kafue National Park. Audio recordings of lionesses lure the males. Wildlife vet Dr. Ian Parsons darts two males. As a coalition, they stand a better chance to survive the trauma of a translocation. The big question on everyone's mind 
is whether these two males will bond with Lady. If they do bond with her, she might be able to teach them how to keep a low profile and avoid the villages. The two lions wake up in an enclosure, or a boma, right in the middle of Lady's core territory. One of the males is three years old, the other a bit younger. Lady is almost eight years their senior. The age gap is intentional. Older lions might not submit to Lady's authority. Hopefully, these youngsters will. This is the first time in years that Lady has set eyes on her own kind. She keeps watch as the two males familiarize themselves with their new home. The first piece of the puzzle falls into place. But then, disaster strikes. On the fifth day in the Boma, they escape. Finding themselves in a strange environment, they could take fright and bolt. To Herbert's relief, he finds them a few hundred meters from the enclosure. Lady's response is odd. She rolls to show them she is not a threat, but she doesn't approach them. The males are aware they are in her territory. Everything is new. It's going to take time to adjust. Before she leaves, Lady marks the territory with her urine. It's a strong message. She's the landowner. They are the squatters. And then she leaves them. The presence of two new lions in Lua has a huge impact on the local residents. It's not only villagers that are now at risk. The arrival of the two lions jeopardizes the hyena's position of power. Together, they make a fearsome team. Only the younger of the two wears a collar, as they are almost never apart. The acid test is to see whether they will mate with Lady or leave her to seek other females. It's a precarious start, but the journey has begun. Almost three years go by without incident. It's November, the beginning of the rainy season. Thousands of wildebeest pour into ladies' territory. The males are hardly recognizable. They are now almost six years old, and their bodies are beefed up, their manes more pronounced. After all this time, they're still together and have bonded with Lady, who seems to be doing all the hunting. She targets wildebeest, almost twice her size. With a powerful bite to the neck, she suffocates her quarry. It's all over in minutes. The meat from a small calf could keep her going for a few days, but she's not hunting only for herself.
As the most experienced hunter in this trio, she is happy to share her kill. The fact that she allows the males to join her and that they don't chase her off the carcass is significant. Eating together is the first building block of a pride. Her reward is companionship. The males get the lion's share of her kill. They gorge themselves and can eat up to a quarter of their own weight in one sitting. For the first time, Herbert sees the two males compete. It is the younger of the two brothers that emerges as the dominant male. He's the one that follows her when she's in estrus. He grimaces, curling back his lips to expose an organ in the back of his mouth that picks up faint chemical pheromones. He can smell that she's in heat. It's the dance Herbert has been waiting to film for years. The brother watches from the sidelines. Lady stays receptive for several days and copulates frequently. Both males stick to her like glue. They won't fight over her. As members of the same coalition, they come to a gentleman's agreement. If the dominant brother tires, the other might get a chance to mate as well. Now she rolls, not to greet Herbert, but in submission. When Herbert returns a year later, there are still no cubs. It's a huge disappointment. Lady is now almost 13 years old, and Herbert and the team must consider the possibility that she is infertile. If that's the case, the males might leave her and start roaming looking for other females to propagate their bloodline. And that will bring them in direct contact with villagers. The team decides to import two young females. And that takes them back to Kafue. Again, the team faces a dilemma. If the females are too old, they might injure Lady or drive her out of her territory. Too young, and the males might kill them. Dr. Ian Parsons oversees the translocation. Uh, we need some water just to keep them cool while we're traveling. All right, antidote. That's not very fast acting. It takes about 15 minutes to work. Tranquilized and blindfolded, the two females begin their journey to Lua. Their arrival is coded in irony. The tribe settled here more than a hundred years ago on the orders of the first king to protect the wildlife. But many of them have never seen a lion. 
And yet lions have always played an important part in the biodiversity of Lua. African Parks aims to restore the imbalance. But this is only possible if Lady remains the central character. She has to teach the new arrivals the lay of the land and teach them to keep away from villages. The question now is whether she can transfer these skills in time. The two lionesses are collared with radio transmitters before being released into the enclosure. Lady's world is about to be turned upside down once again. To Herbert, she seems sad and confused. She turns her back on the Boma and heads north. The males, on the other hand, are very interested. These two lionesses are barely 20 months old and still cub-like. Male lions are known to kill cubs they haven't sired. No one knows how this will play out. After three days, Lady makes a U-turn and returns to the fenced-off Boma. The two young females respond to her calls. The connection between Lady and the cubs is immediate. She engages. Cats are vulnerable when they expose their undersides. When they roll, they express submissiveness. Trouble is on the way. Lady's body posture changes. She knows that the males could attack these new residents. Ears back, every muscle contracted. She puts the males in their place. Four cats now crowd her space, after years of solitude. When the males were in the Boma, Lady disappeared for days. But now she is intrigued by the cubs. She keeps constant vigil. The electrical current that runs through the fence is non-lethal, but does give a sharp jolt. Lady is clever. She discovers a broken wire and tries to gain access where the circuit is breached. The males are perturbed by the new arrivals. But before they get any ideas, Lady asserts herself. The balance of power might have shifted, but she's still in control. After five weeks in the Boma, the team feels the young females are ready to be released. Not sure how the males will react, 
they lure them away with a fresh carcass. The young cubs have also not been fed for a couple of days. When the gates open, a new chapter begins. Lady is first on the scene. The cubs have spent more than a month in the Boma to adjust. The question now is whether this newly forged bond will hold when they step through the gate. The first encounter turns into a cat fight. But it is more show than anything else. If Lady wants to kill these cubs, she can do so in the blink of an eye. The first contact might seem aggressive, but it plays out according to plan. Lady is doing exactly what the team hoped for. She accepts them in her territory and establishes her dominance. The landscape of Lua now looks very different from the days when Lady followed Herbert to his camp. Now two young and subdued females follow her. But Lady is not used to having an entourage. She's not at all familiar with the dynamics of a pride. Now that she has her freedom back, she does the unexpected. She abandons them. The two young females now find themselves in a new and unfamiliar environment swarming with hyenas. Since their release, the young females stick together. But their lives are in real jeopardy. Hyenas can kill lonesome female lions, and tonight, they face a growing mob. In no time, the newcomers are surrounded by a hungry and ferocious clan. They stand their ground, but the noise attracts a far more dangerous adversary, the males. The two brothers have finally tracked down the youngsters in the wild, and Lady is nowhere in sight to protect them. The hyenas know what's good for them. En masse, they retreat. This is their first encounter with the males outside the boma. Anything can happen. The brown-collared female is first to bolt. The white collar is cornered before she can escape.
two against one. The odds are not in her favor. But her assertiveness could be her saving grace. At the right moment, she crouches in submission. The encounter with the males is a frightening experience for both young females. They split up. Separated, they are now more vulnerable. Danger looms for both of them. The team manages to track down the females, and they are reunited. It takes months before they settle down. But little does Herbert know that he is filming them for the last time. The next day, the brown collar is gone. Craig Hay heads up one of the search parties. All eyes are now on finding the brown collared female. Some of the farmers have seen her in the vicinity. Her life is in real danger. Poaching is rife here. And then, their worst fears are confirmed. It's an air. A faint radio signal comes from a pond. I got it. It is the brown collar. It's been cut. Yes, it's been cut the sharp knife. It's a definite cut. You see, so someone found the lion and threw this in. Uh, or killed the lion. killed the lion and, and threw this in. The mood is one of despair. To complicate matters, the female in the white collar turns away from Ladies' Corps territory and begins walking in a northwesterly direction towards Angola. Even if she survives, in time, she will outgrow the collar and suffocate. The dream to establish a pride in Lua begins to unravel. In an unexpected twist, the males follow the white-collared female to Angola. The further they move away from Ladies Corps territory, the less influence she has in keeping them out of danger zones. A rescue mission is launched to find the white-collared female and the males before they cross the border. Dr. Matt Becker, who runs the Zambian Carnivore Project, joins the search party. He spots the white-collared female a few kilometers from Angola. They dart her. But she runs into the reeds and almost drowns. It's a close shave. It's now 10 to 6. We have 40 minutes. The rescue mission is tricky. The small helicopter can barely lift her, and the ground team must help before the pilot manages to get his precious cargo airborne. The males have slipped off the radar, and the team hopes they will turn around on their own accord. Meanwhile, more drama unfolds close to the Boma. Lady is darted. 
The plan is to put her in the Boma with the surviving female to try and forge a stronger bond between them. It is the most difficult decision the team has had to make until now. Lady has never been deprived of her freedom. She gets a quick medical checkup and a new collar. The young female, tranquilized, is already in the Boma. No one knows how Lady will behave in captivity. Locked up and frustrated, she could turn violent and kill the youngster. A power struggle is inevitable. More bad news. One of the males crosses the border and is killed by cattle farmers in Angola. Of the five lions, now only three remain. Would this be enough to start a pride? No one knows for sure. Lady, when she recovers from the anesthetic, is extremely agitated. She is on the wrong side of the fence and she can't dig her way out. The young female, on the other hand, is familiar with the enclosure. This puts her in a strong position to assert power and seize authority. Clearly upset, Lady seeks refuge in a tree. Herbert thinks this elevated position is her attempt to retain control. Hunger eventually tempts her down. For Herbert, it's difficult to watch. This is a situation which I never thought would happen, is that a uh, lady would need to be put into the Burma. Now, she's been roaming free for all her life, which is probably about 13 years, 14 years, and uh, now she needs to be Locked away. It's good, lady. The tree becomes a central prop in this battle of wits between these two cats. The young female catches on very quickly. She is lighter. If height is of any consequence, she can go higher. From her elevated position, the young female spots the surviving lion. He is just returning from Angola, alone. It seems as if every breakthrough in this project is shadowed by a new set of problems. The two brothers formed a strong coalition. They made this territory their own, and for four years, managed to stay out of trouble with the villagers. The hope of establishing a new generation of lions now resides with the survivor. Lady and the young female emerge from the Boma after seven weeks. The outcome of the bonding exercise is disappointing. They split up. Lady doesn't want another cat on her tail.
But the time in the Boma did benefit the young female. It gave her time to mature. She doesn't see the male as a threat anymore. There is an explanation for her playful behavior. She is an estrus. Lady is excluded from this courting ritual. After all the turns and twists in this complicated plot, she finds herself once more alone. After hunting alone, the young lioness returns to the male. She is ready to mate. The project is one step closer to reaching its goal. The male will sire the next generation. But what about Lady? Will she be part of this new pride? It somehow seems sad and tragic if she is now excluded. And on cue, she disappears. The male now follows the young female when she hunts. Mm. To feed mm. both of them, she must target bigger prey. The male is not helpful. His over-eagerness spoils the hunt. <sighs> Herbert is about to accept that this regent king and the young female are now the major players in this drama, when Lady suddenly reappears. The young female watches the reunion from a distance. Over many years, Herbert and Lady somehow learn to recognize and respect each other's intentions. When she looks at him now, he feels he can almost hear her asking, is this what you wanted? In the presence of the male, Lady lies down with the young female. This is what a pride looks like. After so many years, all the effort and energy that went into this project seemed to pay off. The young female frequently mates with the lion in Lady's presence. Females are the cornerstone of prides. They form strong bonds and hunt together. The male's instinct is to protect them and his drive is to breed.
But a female in estrus that leads to mating is not a guarantee that this new pride is stable and secure. Hunting together is the final test. And then it happens. The young female takes the lead. Lady follows. This is certainly a new development. And the outcome is swift and lethal. In all his years at Lua, this is the first time that Herbert films Lady not hunting on her own. When the male joins them, the circle is complete. The air is full of promise. Lady remains the central force and protector of this new pride. She may not give birth to the next Lion King, but she will make sure that he has a kingdom.